Congratulations, you just stumbled upon a video where me, Cohen, a Caribbean teacher, is going to spill the beans and crushing your school projects. And if you are watching this today, Merry Christmas, watching Matt's videos on Christmas Day. <laughs> I love any dedication. In this video, I'm going to do three things. One, I'm going to actually run through an entire sample of the CSEC Maths SPA that I did just for this video. Number two, I'm going to reveal a boatload of tips and ideas you can use to speed up your project work for college or school. And finally, I'm going to leave a link open for you to actually go and download the project that I do in this video on my Instagram for uh, <laughs> reference purposes. All right, let me start. Tip number one. Always check the mark scheme before you begin any of your projects. So this is what the CSEC mark scheme looks like. I did a video examining this already recently. The junk of marks are in the presentation of data, so we're going to bring our A game for that section. Okay, so to start the project, I'm going to need a project title. So go up some mountain, um, some place spiritual, and you meditate, and you get a project title from the heavens. All right, let's see my title. An investigation into the effect being in a relationship as on a student's academic performance depending on gender full marks buddy it's clear concise and relates to real world problem now if you're feeling a little insecure about your project title you can drop a comment in my recent photo on instagram and i'll rate your project title all right next up is the introduction but one quick tip before we go on though Fonts, F-O-N-T-S, my gosh. You see all the students and fonts. Look here are a list of some of the acceptable fonts. If you write your project with some kind of curly, italic, fancy looking calligraphy, hieroglyphic font, burn it! Burn it now! <laughs> a lot of teachers are in love with the old school times new Roman font. Kind of old school for me, but um, ask your teacher what font they really love and give it to them. Ask your lecturer what font they love for your project and give it to them. Or oh, follow the Chicago manual of style, but no, don't, 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 don't be crazy with no italic curly thing. Alright, so here's a little look at my introduction. The table of contents, you'll notice, is automatic, so I can automatically update it. I got it from the reference section in Microsoft Word, if you don't know about it. It's magnificent because it, it just grabs the heading that you have in your project and generates a table of contents out of it. This benefits you in that you don't need to actually go and manually put in page numbers and if you change anything in your project, you can always automatically update your table of contents. So wait, not really a big fan of putting my table of contents in the introduction, but CXC wants that, so I'm going to give it to them. For the rest of the introduction, you want to state your objectives very clearly, you want to state your purpose, you want to give a comprehensive description of the project, and then you want to move on to the next method of data collection. There are five main methods of data collection that you will encounter in your work. Number one, questionnaires, EK surveys. Number two, interviews. Number three, observation, where you just go and macro. Number four, documents and records, aka reviewing literature, literature review, whatever. And the fifth one is case studies or experimenting and figuring all this stuff yourself. So what you want to do is just list two of these methods. Three is ideal, but once you hit them two in your data collection, that should be okay depending on what your project is about. So to get the information for this project, I did a questionnaire and then I just looked at some student records. All right, so next up we have the presentation of data. But before I do that, let me give you two more tips. Page breaks and show hide button. Show hide button. But let's start with the page breaks. A classic amateur move that some students do is press enter 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 to go to the next page don't do that my brother don't do that sis use page breaks without the use of page breaks editing earlier sections of your projects can become a problem you make a mistake in a page that's high up and now all of a sudden you have to get all the other pages back in line so just use page breaks and ease up yourself now, on to the other tip, the show hide button. This is probably one of the most important tips I'll give you in this video for where editing is concerned. Listen, Microsoft Word, in all its wisdom, has created this button, the show hide button, that you can actually see behind, in the background, all the spaces, enters, and tabs, and all other stuff that you press that is not an actual character. 
You may not understand why until you start to use it, especially in larger projects, but this is gold for the editing process because it's like a guide. I always turn on the show hide button when correcting SBAs that students send me digitally and it lets me see all the stuff, the weird stuff that they did in the background that is messing up their editing. I write my projects with the show hide button on and only when I'm finished I turn it off just to see how the project would look on the paper. Don't worry, the show hide stuff, the stuff that pops up when you press the show hide button, that doesn't print. Those are non-printable characters. They just there to show you how many spaces you enter. Maybe you double spaced, maybe you press too much spaces, maybe you should have used a tab. Maybe you did the enter thing instead of pressing page break, so that's messing you up. I get to see all of that, especially if I'm fixing an SBA for someone. Step into the professional light and use the show hide button. You won't be sorry. Alright, so you have to remember it's Christmas Eve and there will be lots of music and festivities in the background. My neighbors are going all out. So you, I don't know if you'll hear it, but the audio not going to be the best. It's not going to be the best. Um, so let's go into the presentation of data. This is the longest part of the project. Here are some things to keep in mind when you jump into the presentation of data. Uh, like for this maths SBA, you need to have a plan what you what you intend to get out of your data. So you will create charts or graphs and you looking to get at least two of them or two mathematical um, core stuff that you did other than tables so you might have a table a pie chart a line graph a table a pie chart a table a bar graph and another graph you need to have at, at least two graphs don't make it too bare because you will get bare marks so make sure you know you 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 make the best out of your presentation of data so that it can line up with what objectives you had in mind at first and so that you can actually get stuff out of it when you step into the analysis and discussion of findings and stuff like that and since you are fighting up with graphs and charts and calculations you need to have an idea how to put objects and diagrams and use microsoft excel and put stuff into microsoft word that will really help so you want to do a little research on that and also use um equations when you are stating your mathematical equations so insert equations and fiddle around with that spend some time with that learn that as well there are tools on microsoft word and people just just bypass the tools and just fight up with the normal basic editing on their keyboard you can use stuff to make your project look a little better use it and you'll get better marks don't get too explanative explanative what's that word by explanate don't, don't um elaborate on any explanations in your presentation of data just put down the graphs and maybe the calculations to get the graphs or whatever calculations you did just put that down don't explain go into any big explanation you will be taking away stuff from your analysis and discussion of finance. So remember the aim of my project was to check and see if students grades are affected by being in a relationship and a comparative bar graph came in really handy here and you can already watch this and begin to see the answer to that question. It seems like yes they are affected by being in a relationship and I also hit them up with a little line graph at the end. and. For this project, I could have probably done something with standard deviation just to check out the data I spread, but I rushed this down the day before Christmas, Christmas Eve, and uh, I was like, nah, I ain't going and do all of that. But because with standard deviation, you have some calculation to do there. I would probably do that in the next video so people who do in projects and involving standard deviation in it, they could understand what's going on. So, next up is the analysis. So, in this section, you do a few final calculations and really analyze the data you have so skillfully presented in a mathematical way. No, don't get confused. You don't need to get too qualitative or philosophical on this part of the project. You just need to see what your presentation of data, what the results mean from a logical mathematical standpoint. You see in the next section of this project, the discussion of findings is where you get to explain more stuff exactly how it relates to your project. So like you go back up to your purpose and your objectives that you wrote in the introduction and you elaborate on this and show how your study was useful in extracting some kind of information out of this idea that you wanted so i i know students get mixed up with these two parts of the project and uh, these two parts the discussion of finding and the analysis of data really pause the video and check the different ways i expound on the information between these two sections 
so you can watch it in the sample or you can actually get the sample to you know have for reference purposes by just clicking on my instagram kerwin springer searching me up and typing in my recent photos send me the thing tell me you want the thing and i will send you the thing all right and finally in the project you're going to your conclusion yeah so your conclusion is basically a paragraph answering the purpose answering the title the purpose the objectives just one paragraph that kind of gives the answer to what you wanted it's a conclusion you conclude so the moment you have all been waiting for my conclusion i'll just read the paragraph this research shows that the claim that the student's percentage falls when entering into a relationship is valid for form five students of my school the drop-in percentage is 2.1 percent for boys and 13.5 percent for girls exam marks for girls are more negatively affected 11.4 percent than boys when in a relationship additionally because you know we want to be extra and get all the marks additionally in this investigation there was a fall of 2.125 percent in exams for every additional relationship a student had whoa so anytime you enter in one relationship and you're done and then you enter in the next relationship your percentage is going to fall by 2.125 percent statistically wow so remember you need to use headings for each one of these sections those are all the marks giving section there are two more sections references and appendix that you can put into your project and i i just gave an idea of what you would put in them in the sample so you can go check it out as well a nice thing to put in your appendix is like um the questionnaire and stuff like that the questions you ask in your interview um you could have a few appendixes appendices app what whatever and then your reference you obviously want to reference me well you could reference anything any book any article newspaper magazine website that helped you out um uh it helps to make your project like neater i know it's not really for marks but if you don't have a reference and you should have your teacher can take out marks based on the appearance of your project so there are some marks for appearance and they may just take them out based on that so i think i done there i go in and eat some ham or some kind of thing um actually i'm gonna edit this and upload this and then eat the ham merry christmas see you all maybe before the new year but before the january exams for sure which is like right around the corner so good luck to all the january people press like subscribe look at the shipload of maths videos i have up already and, and those who have exams in january you really shouldn't be having a merry christmas you should have a study filled christmas so for those who have exams in january have a study filled christmas and a study filled new year later